All right, we are going to get started with our next webinar, um, a full service uh, construction management company, Warfel Construction Services, clients in a variety of industries across the Mid-Atlantic region on projects both large and small in scale. At Warfel, the company mission, Clients for Life, guides all relationships and partnerships. All team members strive to emulate the core values of honesty, integrity, accountability, initiative, and teamwork to strengthen client relationships. Joining us today from Warfel Construction to share the things no one tells you about construction at your school are Colleen Lynn, the Director of Business Development, and Justin Walton, the Senior Constructability Manager. Welcome, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Yanni. That was a wonderful introduction. Uh, we appreciate the warm welcome. Uh, good afternoon to everyone here today. Um, Jess and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend a little time talking about a topic that is near and dear to our heart, uh, construction. Our intent today is to educate you on something that is likely on your mind at some point or another, and that is capital improvements to your campus. Whether it's deferred maintenance or minor renovations, major renovations, or maybe even a new addition to school, we recognize that the process of going through a construction project can be overwhelming. So let's start our presentation now and start talking about the things no one tells you about construction at your school. So let's talk about starting the journey, and it is a journey. Um, one of the things that many independent schools have in common is beautiful buildings with a tremendous amount of character. However, in many cases, those buildings are decades old. Uh, we talk with a lot of clients who say, oh my, we have a building that was built in 1940 or 1950 or 1960, and we recognize that it's time to make some upgrades but we don't really know where to start. Uh, with those wonderful old buildings, um, our aging systems such as HVAC, uh, we know that our clients need to improve air quality and things to you know, make the building safer for their students going forward. So something to consider um, is, is the age of the buildings and how to best uh, update those for the future generations. You know, The next question is, do we renovate? You know, that seems like a large task in an older building. Um, do we have an opportunity to add on or are we fortunate enough to uh, have some land where we could build new? One thing that we can tell you is there are so many options to improve your campus, regardless of what that uh, space looks like, okay? So if you're a little bit landlocked, that's okay. Uh, we can help bring your vision to life for the future by just thinking through different design options and ideas for what you're trying to accomplish. The question that I get all the time when I'm having an initial meeting with a education client is what can we do? And you would be surprised how many options you have uh, to upgrade your school. Best thing to do is to uh, start with a wish list. You know, what are the things that you really would like to have? Uh, what are the things that you must have? What types of changes have to be made? Uh, and start from there and then partner with the right people to start the process of figuring out how can we bring those ideas to life. The active campus and event calendar, one of my favorite topics. So we realize that, you know, the school grounds are bustling with students and activities, whether it is athletics or the arts uh, or some community service event that's happening on campus. We recognize that school cannot take a backseat to construction. Right. So the monthly ice cream social and the dance and all of the other events that happen, um, that still has to go on. So recognizing that it's important to partner uh, with individual companies that realize you may have to phase some things out or take things, um, take on things in, in, in different um, chunks based on being able to let your students continue to thrive in their learning environment on campus while you're making your upgrades. 
What do other schools have? So we recognize also that you're aware of uh, what neighboring schools have to offer from a programming perspective, from an activity perspective, from a facilities perspective. What we always recommend is that we know that you know first impressions are really important. So you want to invest where immediate impact is going to be made. And partnering with the right, you know, design and construction team can help you understand how can we, you know, make some of those upgrades that are important from a system perspective, while also making uh, the school look more aesthetically up to date um, for, you know, the things that people can see when they walk into the building. Anyone that is going through um, the exploratory phases of a construction project right now, especially in education, um, must have sustainability, equity, and wellness on their mind. Um, great ideas in terms of how to incorporate those even into older buildings so that accessibility and other important things are considered as we start to design something new. And the burning question that I get all of the time when I'm speaking with leadership uh, at any of our independent schools or with any of our education clients is, how do I find time to manage this project? And it's going to take a team. Uh, that's one of the things that Justin will talk about today. But, you know, from your own, um, you know, local faculty and staff, all the way out to your design partner and your construction partners, recognize that it is something we can guide you through. And with the right amount of teamwork, um, everything can happen and you can continue to do what you do best, which is serve your students um, and stick to the day-to-day -day operations of a wonderful learning environment. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Justin so that he can talk a little bit about learning opportunities on campus during construction. All right, thanks, Colleen. Um, so, um, you know, I might be biased, but you know, I, every time I, I walk on a construction site, all I see are opportunities to learn, right? So even with my kids, we talk about it all the time, like what am I working on at work? Um, you know, there, there's just, uh, an amazing number of opportunities to integrate with both the planning process, the design process, and the construction process. And even afterwards, if you want to look at data for how the school is running, there's so many opportunities out there to use the building uh, and the building process as a learning tool. So for me, this journey of integrating with design and construction um, really began all the way back when in my high school, the Governor's School in Richmond, Virginia, Go Green Dragons. Uh, so we had the opportunity um, as uh, juniors and seniors in that school to take part in a visioning process. And we were in this beautiful 1920s era school, which was beautiful in so many ways and yet inadequate really for the learning environments that we needed. And so we were looking at building a new institution. So we worked together with the design team um, and work through programming studies that forced us to like sort of count and measure all of our spaces to really take stock in how we use the building um, and how we might want to use a different space. You know, what was missing? You know, what worked really well? And what didn't? So asking those questions about how we occupy the space, really compelling. We also went through like complete design charrettes and really got the creative juices rolling right and work together to come up with all these crazy schemes about what the school might look like and you know we didn't do all of them but it, it just the act of like accessing the student creativity uh, and the faculty in that um, it was really compelling it was a lot of fun and really gave us a sense of investment in what was going to what was going to occur um also part of that was you know sort of civic engagement right so we had to meet we had to talk through ideas. We had to persuade each other. Um, we had to, you know, go through like town hall style, um, you know, decision making and voting processes. So all those things were kind of like a really rich experience with respect to what it what it takes to bring a large group together to work together to collaborate to come up with decisions and to really come, you know, with a unified vision for how a project might develop. So this was this is a really unique window into the design and construction process that I, I was gifted as a student. You know, I've been able to do that at numerous stops in my career through architecture and into construction. Um, and it was a real gift to me and a lot of my classmates who a number of them uh, went on to do that kind of work. So a real inspiration to the students. You know, um, I'd say as design and construction professionals, we're really passionate people. We love what we do. 
teachers tend to love what they do, right? You know, that they do it because they love it. They love teaching. They love sharing information. You're going to find a lot of that similar within design and construction. So I would always recommend and advocate to, you know, to talk and engage with your design and construction professionals, engage with your consultants, ask them, how can, how can you contribute what you do to our program? Or how have you done that in the past? You know, how can we team together to bring some of your tasks into our curriculum and vice versa, right? You know, um, so stitching those things together in a real web is a, a, a huge asset to your student body um, and really an asset to the whole process because it builds legitimacy within the process, right? You know, we're doing this big project together and we're all going to benefit from it along the way and we're going to have fun doing it, right? So you're building that like sense of unity and legitimacy. And I just want to leave you with a few like examples of ways in which I've seen it executed in the past or experienced it. Right. So using art as a means of inviting student expression. We talked about those design charrettes, getting those artistic juices flowing is always really compelling. You know, maybe that translates into something that can become a permanent artifact within the finished construction. You know, inviting your designers uh, to exhibit some of their amazing like modeling tools, some of their rendering tools, some of their coordination tools, like their spaces, how they work, where they work, um, how they collaborate and communicate with each other. Um, all really interesting, right? You know, use your engineers, right? They may not be the dy most dynamic people, but they really do have a lot of information. The, you know, how is the structure coming together? What are the different systems? And like, how does that work? Would that relate to one of your science classes or math classes in terms of calculating things? You know, is there something about the science of the building systems that you're using that could be a really great addition to curriculum somewhere? Uh, and this doesn't have to be high level, you know? There's lots of ways to bring this information down to the younger kids that still make sense of things. Um, can't forget all of the myriad opportunities in ecology and sustainability um, with equity and accessibility to buildings, wellness within space, resiliency. All these things are themes that find themselves like across all of our, you know, lots of different categories in our culture right now. And I think they're really important within construction and can be really easily realized. It's easy to ask those questions like, how can we do that a little bit better this time? Like, how can our building be a little and not just less bad, but better? How can it contribute? How can it make things new? Um, and don't forget your construction team when things are going on. Of course, great to tour the site, but it's not just that. There's great drone technology, scanning technology, coordination technology that they are using. It's a great chance to team with your STEM curriculum and bring something to life. So I'm biased, but I think there's incredible opportunities there and uh, never want that to weigh you down, but so many things to do uh, that you can have fun with your construction. Thanks, Justin. So with the proper planning and preparation, building enthusiasm around a project uh, is really the fun and exciting part. So I want to highlight some of the audiences uh, that can help you do that. Justin just did a really nice job talking about what it was like when he was a student and there was uh, the beginning of a, a construction project happening at his school as a Green Dragon. Um, so students are a huge part of, of that process. And if you get them excited, they're gonna get everybody excited. You know, we talk a lot about prospective students. So if you think about, um, you know, not only building for today, but building for the future, we're making decisions um, in our schools for this year, next year, the next 10 years, 20, 30 years. So I know that as you know, we're we're touring through, um, touring new families through our, our campuses, um, it's important to have them understand what your vision is and get them excited uh, and maybe choose your school because some of the programming um, that you offer based on, on these construction projects that you're about to uh, embark on. Parents and families. So, you know, I have three children myself. Uh, I spend a tremendous amount of time at school uh, volunteering. We spend time there through community service events and, and other, you know, athletic and um, just day-to-day -day operations of, of being a parent in an active school environment. So getting parents and families uh, excited will help with fundraising. Um, we'll help them understand that, you know, they may have younger children that are going to attend that school and they want some of, you know, the latest and greatest offerings uh, that you're considering for your school. 
faculty and staff, um, a, a very important audience, uh, and those that know the buildings and the programs better than anybody else. Engaging the faculty and staff early on in conversations, wish lists, what do we need, what would we love to have, uh, is a great way to build enthusiasm. Uh, as we know, they are the ones that are going to have to um, you know, be there throughout construction as well. So getting their buy-in and ideas um, is really helpful early on. They will help pave the way for the most perfect project uh, because they're in those buildings uh, day in and day out. Alumni and donors, you know, we all love to talk about when we were in school, right? Justin did it already, but we all think back to those important early years of learning and the memories that we have in these buildings. So, you know, knowing that getting alumni uh, excited about a project um, and donors will likely be some of those alumni uh, is important in the development and the capital campaigning, uh, campaign planning uh, for, for funding for this project. And, you know, the school isn't just about the building, it's about the community and the people that live and work in that area. Um, everyone knows what's going on in our local schools and you can really gain, um, gain excitement and enthusiasm outside of the school and really bring it out into the community. Um, many of our schools are also used for, you know, summer camps and other activities. So it's really about the whole community, uh, not just about your school. What I'd like to do next is talk about a, an active project right now um, that may help you through uh, the thought process of getting started and, and how to really bring a project uh, to life. Uh, Bishop Shanahan High School is a private high school in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, not far from many of us right now. Um, they are, we are currently on campus right now on an active, very active campus uh, while high school is in session helping them with the renovation um, and addition of a new uh, STEM and innovation wing. So this is a project that they've been working towards from a visionary perspective for a couple of years. Uh, and it has it just started back in March. So the reason I wanna talk about this is it's a real life example of something that you could be going through as you embark on this journey. Um, so from a marketing perspective and campaign fundraising, um, I kinda wanna touch on some things that they did that were pretty cool that you can think about. Uh, they started out with some email marketing uh, to the audiences that I just discussed, prospective students, current students, families, alumni, telling them that something exciting was happening at Shanahan. And they called the campaign Soaring to New Heights, but they didn't really give any information about it. So they did that for a few months uh, and then had an open house kickoff. Uh, and right before that, they sent a really nice uh, marketing video out with their vision um, to update you know, the school based on the way students learn today and will learn tomorrow and why this project um, has come to life for the school. Uh, they incorporated some renderings and you know, drone technology and things like that to get people really excited. And along with that, was the kickoff to you know, the financial um, fundraising campaign for the project. Uh, the picture that you see here, um, I think is important because this is their main entrance to the school. Uh, as I mentioned, this project is happening right now. So if you think about April, you've got spring sports happening, you've got graduation, you've got the spring play. Uh, there are constantly people in and out of campus. And they were very concerned about this drop-off loop. This is where all visitors come. This is where the buses drop off the students every day and pick them up. So we came up with this idea to market what they're trying to do, which is get people to understand the importance of STEM uh, and creativity and how they are you know, improving their campus by you know, launching this project. So behind that fence is... Uh, all of our wonderful construction equipment, but these are the types of logistical things that you have to think about uh, when you're about to start a project. So they love the fence. It looks nice and clean and it's getting people excited, not only the students, but all the guests that are on campus all of the time from neighboring schools, et cetera. So would love to you know, talk to anybody more about these types of ideas as well, um, because they, it does really help with building enthusiasm around your project. Justin's going to touch on the team and the importance of that next. All right. So yeah, team is incredibly important, right? You know, so this is this is the group of people, the group of minds that are going to put together your project, right? And um, 
obviously, uh, I think it goes without saying you want somebody that's got the right experience and expertise, knows how to do these things, knows how to design and construct absolutely baseline. However, I want to back up to really what we think is really the foundation, which is kind of like shared values, culture, chemistry, um, and just the personnel, particular personnel. And the reason why I say that is just that, um, you know, I've seen some projects, uh, you know, being in the industry as long as I have, I've seen projects with really skilled professionals, but just weren't a good fit, right? They they have incredible portfolios, but they just don't quite fit the job quite right, or maybe don't have that particular skill set for that project, uh, or just culturally don't share quite the same vision. And in those circumstances, with construction being as complex and uh, you know having as many decisions as need to be made, you know having that foundation of shared values, of trust, culture, of understanding uh, are um, really by far the most important thing, right? You want to be able to trust the person who's sitting across from you that they have your best interest in mind, that they understand your values, that they understand your culture and that they're true partners in the process, right? They have no agenda other than to support your work as educators um, through the expansion, renovation, addition, uh, or new construction in support of your campus and your mission. It's so incredibly important. Um, so um, definitely leading with that. And what that looks like in a way is, you know, just really upfront. You know, if you don't already have those partners established, and maybe you do, and congratulations if you do. If you really have that fit, that's amazing. If you don't, you know, really taking the time up front, not just to review portfolios, but to meet with them, to engage with them, to really have conversations with them, to contact their references and see how the communication went, you know, how their, uh, you know, not just what the end product was, right? Get a sense of the quality of the people that you would actually be working with. So in that sense, you're asking the question, like, we like you, we like your company, we like the values that you're showing us, but who will you give me to work with? You know, who is that person that's going to be the person that I always call to ask questions or to get good guidance for answers? Because um, that's so critically important for success in the project. You know, if, this, if that person, if your liaison with the consultant or the constructor is good, if you all have a good connection and are able to work fluidly together, um, then all of these decisions become more pleasurable. Um, you can move through them quicker. Uh, you communicate smoothly. All of that goes smoothly. So, yeah, it, definitely important that the culture and the value of people that come onto your project, you know, meet and sync with the people on your team and your community. That said, uh, you know, not going to brush over experience uh, and expertise. Also very important. Uh, your learning environments at independent schools are not your standard environment. This is no office building or warehouse or, you know, we're, we're not just building normal things here, right? Is that you're not the average commercial client. So, um, and understand that about yourselves, value that, you know, you all are unique institutions, you have unique needs and your partners need to be able to meet you where you are in those needs, right? You can't be changing yourself to meet their skill set. So what that means is, you know, in, in circumstances on independent school campuses, you know, there's a lot of listening that's needed because there's a lot of complexity on your end with your schools, right? Are they really willing to listen to learn about the ways in which your community learns and interacts, um, in which you gather? Um, are they willing to understand the particular needs, both short-term and long-term for your institutions? You all are not like short-term organizations, right? You're trying to develop campuses and have long, you know, Colleen was hinting at old buildings, right? Well, old buildings means you've been around a while. You know, you may have, you, know, you guys may have decades and decades, if not more, uh, of existence, and you're carrying on a long tradition, right? So do they understand that? Do they understand what your vision is for the future? Are they strong communicators? Are they able to communicate their vision uh, for how, you know, this design might work or construction might work? And are they able to, you know, uh, dialogue with you well about that uh, in a way in which you and your stakeholders and parents and students and everybody understand what's going on and what's, you know, what's going to happen? And um, very importantly, do they have a demonstrated understanding of what it means to design and construct within a school environment, right? Are they 
thinking about phasing to enable your academic calendar to move forward smoothly? Are they thinking about um, like the logistics of how trucks and such might access your campus, right? And are they thinking about the safety of your students? Now, you all have made a promise to the parents who um, are giving their students to you in the morning and picking them up in the afternoon that you'll safely guide them from start to finish of every day. And there's nothing more important than getting those students home safe every day. You know, you want to make sure that your your builders and your designers, as they're thinking about how they're designing and constructing um, for you, that they understand that and that safety is prime and your students need to be making it home every day safe and happy. Both, right? Safe and happy. So um, moving on from team, uh, the last thing we want to cover is, is, is really looking outside of the boundaries a little bit. So we've talked a lot about what's going on in the school, in the community, in the campus, within the bounds of your, your school community, but you are a part of a much larger community, right? You have, your school has neighbors, you have municipalities that you're, you're located within, there's boards and agencies that might oversee things that, uh, you know, have a stake in what you can and can't do. Um, there's organizations, you know, or businesses that might have a input, you know, that might be located near you, that might have a stake in what you're doing, and just generally interest groups of all kinds um, that, you know, kind of stake their own territory from time to time about what they can and uh, or what they'd like to comment on, right? You probably experienced that. Um, no different in construction processes, you know, laying the groundwork of successful relationships within all these different categories, you know, years ahead. Um, thinking about design and construction is something that's possibly inevitable uh, in that you should be thinking about how you're enabling that now so that later on when you go to execute a project, you can do that smoothly. There's, uh, there's you know, as, as educators and leaders of schools, you know, you probably think a lot about development. We talked about development a lot, and that's uh, typically like hand in hand with construction. Um, the last thing you want to happen when you're working on a project is to be have all this momentum built up and then some outside party to throw a wrench in the middle of your project, stop the works, and then every, oh, you lose all that momentum, all that excitement, things, you know, that, that becomes difficult to manage from a PR standpoint. So managing that upfront is really important. And I, I'll give you two quick examples before we move on to Q&A here. The, the first of which um, was uh, actually my, my wife's school that she taught at. Um, their upper school where she was teaching at the time, um, they were looking just something simple. Somebody had donated money because they loved squash and there was a culture like, I don't know, the kids got together and played squash after school at this other um, club nearby. They're like, we should have one of those on grounds. And so they donated a bunch of money and said, all right, we're going to build these squash courts. Well, they were they're at this little corner. They were planned to be built in this little corner of the campus that had an easy access from an adjacent neighborhood. And the neighborhood had already had concerns about the students, some of the students, not all of them, some of them, uh, moving rather quickly through their neighborhood from time to time as they're trying to access a rear parking lot. And um, so the school knew this, they understood that dynamic. And so they reached out to the neighborhood and on their terms, invited them ahead of time into the space, you know, like it gave them refreshments, you know, and, and just basically fostered a conversation ahead of time and acknowledged up front that that could be a problem. Um, say, hey, we're building this. We understand that that might create more interest in this area of campus. We understand that might uh, draw more traffic this way, but we're willing to meet you in the middle and find a way to manage that. And, you know, they came up with a great solution of just, you know, a few different traffic calming procedures and some gating schedules and such at the back there that really helped uh, meet the neighborhood where they were. And ultimately, there were no issues during construction. Everything went smoothly. So that was a huge win for them. On another campus um, I encountered, <clears throat> they had a uh, they had two campuses. Uh, they had a, a middle upper and a lower campus. The lower campus had tons of room on it, right? They had lots of land in this lower school campus. It was beautiful, pastoral. Uh, and they were busting at the seams at their older campus there where they had the middle and high school. And they decided, you know what, we're gonna move the middle school across the road um, and uh, invest in this other campus 
and we're going to, you know, build this big middle, you know, redo the whole campus there. Well, <clears throat> the businesses in that area were not psyched about that. And the school knew that would be an issue. It was a crowded area. Um, traffic was already a little bit of an issue. And the businesses were kind of all up in arms. They're like, look, you're going to add all these trips per day outside of our, you know, doors and going to congest this area. And it's going to be a problem for us. And they said, yep, you know what? You're right. That's, that's undoubtedly the case. Um, we will see if we can, you know, pull something out of our tool belt to help figure this out. And so they just adjusted their scheduling. They said, you know what, we'll do this. We'll do a staged uh, uh, start of the day and end to the day. That way we can sort of like sort of uh, feather out the intensity, the traffic. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put forward, you know, we'll, we'll make a pledge to you and to the municipality that we'll pledge $200,000 um, to make some improvements at the intersection if we need to. And they all agreed that that was acceptable and that they were going to proceed forward. Well, what do you know? It's It's been about 15 years now, and I've never heard once that they've done anything. So they never had to spend the money. Everybody was happy. The school schedule works out all right. Um, so those are some real wins that if that had happened during the middle of design or during construction, um, really could have put a damper on what was a really exciting project for that institution. So um, yeah, just the importance of thinking ahead about your neighbors as part of the construction process as well, really important. So um, we know we haven't touched on everything uh, by any means whatsoever. Um, and we had to just select a few key issues in order to like share those with you here in this format. But if you have any questions, both about what we said or maybe something we didn't, um, please feel free. So ask away. <laughs>